Uh, this is the general ability part of uh, instrumentation gate 2021 paper. Let us just solve it. First one, getting to the top is out of the options easier than staying on top. Getting to the top is easier than staying on top. That is the correct. Let us take this one. Consider two rectangular sheets, sheet M and sheet N, of dimensions 6 into 4 cm each. So let us take them. Say, suppose sheet M So this will be much like it. 6 and 4. Sheet N is also such. So 6 and 4. Now, what are the folding operations? One, operation 1 and 2. Operation 1 is sheet is folded to half by joining the short edges of the current shape. See the short edges are for this current shape it is 4. So these edges are to be joined. Folding operation 2. The sheet is folded into half by joining the long edges of the current shape. Means these have to be joined. These are the long edges. Folding operation 1 is carried out on sheet M three times and folding operation 2 is being carried out on sheet N three times. So let us carry it out on M. So M is folding operation 1 which means the short edges are to be joined. So after the first operation, the shape would be somewhat like this. Where this would be 4 and this would be 3. The second one, second time. So you see it is by the shorter one. So this now would be folded. So it would look somewhat like this. This is 3 and this is 2. Now the third type. Along the shorter edges, so along 2, this will be folded. So this would be somewhat like this. This being 1.5 and this being 2. Okay. Now they have asked you the ratio of the perimeters of the final folded shape. So what will be the perimeter of this? So the perimeter is twice into length plus breadth. So 2 plus 1.5. That is 3.5 into 2. That is 7. So the perimeter of M becomes 7 after this. Three stages of folding. Now this is N. Now on N folding operation 2 is carried on. Which means the half is done by joining the longer edges. So after the first one. It would look like this. With this being 6 and this being 2. Now after the second one. It would look like this. With this being 6 and this being 1. And after the, sorry, after the third, no, no, this is after the second, sorry. After the second, I missed it with this two. And the third one will be how much? Now, the scale isn't correct, but I hope you can understand that this would be 0.5. So, let us find out the perimeter. What will be the perimeter? It will be twice into length plus breadth. That is 6.5 into 2. That is 30. So, they have asked you the ratio of the perimeters. First N and then M. So, we will say that the ratio is N is to M. Perimeter ratio is 13 is to 7 and then 
this is the option. Five line segments of equal lengths PR, PS, QS, QT, and RD are used to form a star as shown in the figure above. But they have asked you to find the value of theta in degrees. Now, the first thing that we should note that since all these lines are equal, so the polygon formed in between, the pentagon actually, is a regular pentagon that has been formed. Now, what does, what is a regular pentagon imply? What does this imply actually? Regular pentagon. Not only are the sides equal, the interior angles are also equal and the exterior angles are also equal. Now, because such is the case, let us draw the first one set of exterior angles of a regular pentagon. So, these are the set, one set of exterior angles of this pentagon. This is an exterior angle, this is an exterior angle, this is the exterior angle, this is one and this is one. Now we must understand that uh, since there are five sides, so there will be five exterior angles and all the exterior angles are equal. And before that we must also know that for any polygon, the summation of the exterior angles is always 360. So this 360 degree is divided into five equal exterior angles. So therefore each exterior angle would be how much? Each exterior angle would be 360 degree by 5. That is equal to 70. So each of these, this angle would be 72 degrees. Now let us consider the second set of exterior angles for say a regular pentagon. See the second set of exterior angles are these ones. Right, because this is a regular pentagon, so all the exterior angles are equal. So we can say you see this, this, these five exterior angles, all of them are equal to each other. Now, thus once again, the summation of the exterior angles is 360 degree. So here also, each exterior angle must be equal to 360 degree by 5, that is 72 degrees. So each of these exterior angles is equal to 72 degrees. Now let us come back to this picture. Can't we say that this angle is the first set of exterior angles that we talked of? And this angle is nothing but the second set of exterior angles that we have talked of. This is also equal to 72 degree. This is also equal to 72 degrees. So what will be theta equal to? The total angle of a triangle and we are considering this triangle. This triangle. The total angles of the triangle is 180 degree. So theta must be equal to 180 degree minus 72 degree plus 72 degree. So that will be equal to 180 degree minus 144. 144 degrees and that must be equal to 30. Six degrees. So the value of theta is 36 degrees. The mirror image of the above text about the x axis. See the mirror image about this is the x axis would be somewhat like this. So 
this one would be L would look like this. G is a trifle uh, difficult to draw, but would somewhat look like this. Something like this. N would look like this. A would look like this. I would look the same. R would look like this. And T would look like this. So let us check which one of this fits the bill. As we can see, this one goes exactly with it. So I will say that the last one is. Well, in fact, both these options are the same thing. No, N is different here. No, so this is not right. No, no, N is different here. The N is different here. See here, the N is different. Okay, so this will be the one that will go. Uh, in this, what is different? Let us check in this G is different. In this, lots of things are different. The first one of them is E. As we can see, E is different here. But this is perfect. There is a statement either P marries Q or X marries Y. Now they have asked you among the options below, the logical negation of the above statement is which one? Negation means just saying the opposite, which means P is not going to marry Q, X is not going to marry Y. Which if said in the proper English would sound, neither P will marry Q, but marries Q, nor X marries Y. So as we can see, option number A is our correct option. That one only carries on the negation the above statement in totality. A function lambda is uh, defined by uh, lambda pq is p minus q whole square if p is greater than equal to q and p plus q if p is less than q. So they have given lambda this, I mean this part is p as you can see, then this comma and then this part is q. And here below is a constant. Let us find the values of each. So what will be the value of P? See minus of minus 3 plus 2. Minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So minus 1 before that a minus. So that will be plus 1. So P is 1. What is the value of Q here? As you can see there is a minus 2 plus 3. So the value is 1. And what is the value of this constant? See, minus 1, but before that is a minus. So the value of the constant is also 1. So this turns out to lambda 1, 1 divided by 1. Now here, P is equal to Q. So this one will be followed. So that will be equal to 1 minus 1 whole square by 1. But 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 square is 0. So the answer is 0. So this is the Four persons P, Q, R, and S are to be seated in a row, all facing the same direction, but not necessarily in the same order. P and R cannot sit adjacent to each other. S should be seated to the right of Q. The number of distinct seating arrangements possible is how much? Let us check. Four seating arrangements. These are the two criteria P and R cannot sit adjacent to each other and S should be seated to the right of Q. Let us take this criteria first. And by the way, this is suppose the direction that they are all facing. 
So let us suppose Q is here. S is to the right of Q. So S can be there. So then either P is here and R is here or else R is here, P is here. But none of this is possible because P and R cannot sit adjacent to each other. So this case is nullified. The next case. See, this is the direction. We can say, let we are keeping Q at the beginning. So S sits here. So you see, S is to the right of Q. Now here, P can sit here and R will sit here. Or else R can sit here and P will sit here. So perfectly valid. And we can see that two such cases can result. Next. Suppose Q is here and S is here. So absolutely okay. S is to the right of Q. Now in that case. P can be here and R has to be here or else R can be here and P has to be here. But this is not valid because P and R cannot sit adjacent to each other. So this case goes cancelled. Now next case from the first position, let us suppose Q moves to the second position. So S sits to the right of Q, so S sits here. So perfectly okay. Either P sits here and hence R sits here, or else R sits here and hence P can sit here. So as we, this is the direction, so as we find out that here two cases result, two different arrangements result. Next. Q is sitting at the second and S is sitting here. Perfectly possible. Then P can sit here and R can sit here or else R can sit here and then C will sit here. Perfectly possible. So I will say two more cases have resulted. Now another case. Let us now shift Q to the third position. So S will sit here because S sits to the right of Q. Then P will either sit here and hence R will sit here. Or else R will sit here and P will sit here. But this case is not possible because P and R cannot sit adjacent to each other. There is another one case left. Or is it so? Let us find out. Q sits here. But this case is definitely not valid because S then does cannot sit to the right of Q. So this automatically is cancelled. So I find that there are two cases, that there are another two cases and another two cases. So total 2 plus 2 plus 2, that is six different arrangements can take place. Can take place. So the answer is six. Next, see these are two operators on numbers P and Q such that uh, as you can see whatever is written. So they have said this stuff. So let us find out what does this mean. This means x square plus y square divided by xy. Now what does this mean? This means 2 square divided by 2. That is basically equal to 2. Since here it has been said that they both are equal, so I can say that x square plus y square divided by xy is equal to 2. Hence, 
x square plus y square is equal to 2xy. Hence, x square plus y square minus 2xy is equal to 0. Or x minus y whole square is equal to 0. Hence, x minus y is equal to 0. And hence, we can say, therefore, x can be equal to 1. So, this is our answer. Correct option, rather. Humans have the ability to construct worlds entirely in their minds, which don't exist in the physical world. Imagination. So far as we know, no other species possesses this ability. Uh, actually, possesses uh, is a is not absolutely correct. No other species possess this ability. This skill is so important that we have different words to refer to its different flavors, such as imagination, invention, innovation, like this. So, based on the above passage, which one of the following is true? Let us read the options. We do not know of any species other than humans who possess the ability to construct mental words absolutely correct because that is what has been said. Humans have the ability to construct words which don't exist in the physical world. So far as we know, no other species possess this ability. It's absolutely correct. Since there has it has been said which one of the following is true. In the exam, I would not have gone through the other options because I have found my only truth. But since this is not an exam hall, so let us discuss the other options also. The next is imagination, invention and innovation are unrelated to the ability to construct mental worlds. I will say this is absolutely false. Because the ability, the skill has been given names as imagination, invention and innovation. So how come they are unrelated to that skill? They are the names of that skill. Next, no species possess the ability to construct words in their minds. The point is, it has been said here, no species. But it has been said that humans have the ability. And humans is homo sapien, a species. So one species does have the ability. So naturally, since no species has been written, this is wrong. The terms imagination, invention and innovation refer to unrelated skills. Has been clearly said that this skill has been given the names of imagination, invention and innovation. So how come they are unrelated? So wrong. So we find that this is indeed the right one. In a company, 35% of the employees drink coffee, 40% of the employees drink tea, and 10% of the employees drink both tea and coffee. What percent of employees drink neither tea nor coffee? So this would be a Venn diagram. Since uh, everything has been said in percentage, so the universal set value is 100%. Now, there are people who drink coffee and there are people who drink tea. Coffee and tea. Now, they have said coffee is 35%. So, this is 35%. Tea is 40%. Percent, so T is 40 percent and 10 percent drink both of them. So, what percent of the employees drink neither tea nor coffee? So, these are the employees who drink neither tea nor coffee. We have marked it by N. So, they have asked you what is the percentage of N. So, how would we do it? Very simple. See, what is the percentage of people who drink only coffee? 
only coffee would be 35% minus 10% that is equal to 25%. So we know this is 25%. Then we can say now that 25% plus 40% which is the whole T wall part is equal to or rather a plus N plus N is equal to 100% the universal set. So or 65% plus N is equal to 100% or N is equal to 35%. So we will say 35% of the employees drink neither tea nor coffee. So that's it. Uh, thank you.